the sheriff will talk a little bit more about about that here in a, in a second. Uh, tornado touched down about 2:21 uh, p.m. earlier today. Everything happened really quickly. Uh, we immediately uh, alerted uh, our residents throughout the parish via our our siren, our emergency sirens, as well as uh, our text message alert system. Uh, after it was determined um, that uh, there was a touchdown of a tornado uh, near the Nelson Coleman Correctional Facility, which moved northward through Kelowna and into Munts, and that there was extensive damage, we sent out all resources uh, in coordination with the Sheriff's Office, fire, EMS, public works, to start the process of doing search and rescue and, um, and, and gaining access back uh, to, these, to these neighborhoods. As of right now, uh, I can say that, again, there is one confirmed fatality seven or eight injuries at this time. Um, right now, we, we're looking at 475 people uh, without power uh, between, the, uh, between the Kelowna and Munts area. And again, significant damage in both of those, uh, those areas with more damage uh, in the Kelowna area. We're in coordination right now with the United Way of St. Charles Parish. Uh, additionally, we're also in coordination with the Red Cross, uh, Second Harvest Food Bank, Catholic Charities, um, and so if we have residents who are in need, we do want them to contact the St. Charles Parish EOC at 985-783-5050. We're going to have people on the ground assessing needs. Uh, right now, the triage and the, um, and the assessment is taking place at the Kelowna Community Center. And if it's determined that we need a broader shelter, um, if, if there's a significant number of people, we will set up a more permanent shelter at the Edward A. Dufresne Community Center. Um, right now, if residents do need a place to go to just get out of the weather. We are asking them to go to the Edward A. Dufresne Community Center. If they need transportation to the community center, we ask that they uh, we ask that they go ahead and, and call the EOC again, 985-783-5050. Um, and now I'd like to turn over to the sheriff to just speak a little bit more about the sheriff's response. Hey, thank Good evening. Um, so for the second time in two weeks, we've had a tornado touchdown in St. Charles Parish. Uh, the one a couple of weeks ago uh, hit in parity, didn't do a lot of damage, but uh, it was a significant event. Uh, this one uh, uh, created quite a bit of devastation if you had a chance to go down there. Uh, as the president stated, it started up probably from our southwest. It moved just south of our correctional center. It completely destroyed our firing range, which is insignificant compared to the, the damage to the people's homes and the injuries. But just to tell you how strong it was, there's a piece of debris on the levee behind you that literally is unique that came from our firing range 1.8 miles away. So this thing churned across 3127 right along uh, Schoolhouse Road in Kelowna, uh, doing a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, and as the parish president said, we have one fatality. Uh, we're not going to release the names at this time. We have eight people who have reported to the hospital in Luling, St. Charles Hospital, with injuries which I'm told are non-life-threatening. So uh, it's unfortunate, a sad, and our, our, our prayers go out to the family uh, of the lady that lost her life. And, uh, and so um, our, our job is, thankfully, we, we have the equipment. Uh, numerous uh, deputies, detectives, our, you know, our office is not that far down, 3127. Uh, we've got a lot of chainsaws. We literally had to come in and chainsaw our way through trees to get onto the roads to do, uh, to try to do recovery and life-saving measures that we could. Um, so now our function is going to be towards protecting the property. I know a lot of residents were asking me about it back there. Uh, we're bringing in light plants tonight. We're going to have deputies surrounding the neighborhood all night with lights uh, protecting a property. So if you want to go to the community center, you know, to get out of the weather where there's power, you know, and food and things like that, please do so. We will be here uh, until indefinitely uh, to protect everybody's property that's been damaged. Uh, I know I saw energy uh, trucks there with energy and its contractors just right down the road staging. They are probably not going to get power on this community tonight. Uh, maybe parts of it tomorrow, but that's that's probably not going to happen tonight. So. Um, uh, there also were a couple of homes damaged in months. I, I'm not aware of any injuries that were reported there. If you look on the map, you'll see that this tornado literally followed a path right across uh, 
Schoolhouse Road, uh, jumped the river right into Munt and damaged some homes there. So uh, thankfully, we're not aware of injuries there, but we are indeed saddened for the loss of one of our citizens. And, uh, and again, I'm happy that at least the eight individuals that reported to the hospital have non-life-threatening injuries. So that's a positive thing. So this recovery is going to take some time. This community got hit really hard during Ida. Um, you know, this was almost the, probably the eye wall of Ida and just here to the east of us, uh, to the west of us rather. And so th they didn't need this again. I heard residents saying that too. They just can't seem to catch a break. So a um, lot of damage here and now more damage since Ida, which we really didn't need. So we're going to do everything we can to help our residents recover and uh, get back to normal as best we can here. Any questions from WBL? Any yeah, there, there, there was a gas leak reported earlier. We immediately coordinated with uh, with Atmos, and and that should be resolved at this time. Uh, again, it they're was back there working. they're back there working, and, and you know between gas, water, electricity, we've had uh, uh, several agencies that we've had to coordinate with to, to make sure the scene is safe, uh, so that we can uh, we can get in here and assess the, the 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 needs of the residents. And right now, that is the most important thing: is making sure our residents have exactly what they need. So if they need shelter. If they need food, water, uh, clothing, we are going to be coordinating that with various uh, through the United Way. Michelle, do you have any idea about how the death was caused? Was it a medical emergency during the storm, or was it like someone who was injured by debris or thrown from their house? She was outside the residence, so we don't know exactly what happened. But you know, for the wind to be as strong as it was, I mean, it could have. Yeah, we don't know. So she was found outside. Yeah, she ju was outside just outside. Cabin. But again, there were there's there's a, a house trailer that literally was blown two lots down and ended up in the front yard of a house. So all kind of things could have happened. There's debris everywhere. You know, she could have been struck. We don't know for sure. So uh, it's. But it was this was a horrific and a very violent uh, tornado where it passed. I know we have uh, tens of structures that are that are damaged, and so I would say that um, there's 15 to 20 families at least um, that 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 have that have a need. Um, we're we're still gathering that information. We have uh, public board. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, planning and zoning employees coming through uh, to do damage assessment and and make sure we get in contact with those families and uh, get them everything they need at this time. And again, we want to encourage them if you don't have power, and a lot of people are still repairing homes here. Uh, if you don't have power, go to the community center. We're gonna, and I'm talking about one or two deputies. We're gonna have numerous deputies surrounding this community with lights on. So do not worry about your property tonight. Go take care of yourself and your family. Have you all heard from the school district yet? Do we know schools will be open tomorrow? You know, at this time, uh, you know, we're we're they we they have a presence in our EOC right now, and so um, any information from the school is going to come out, um, you know, later today. But I would assume that if if the weather is all clear. Uh, that that school will resume, but again, I'm not going to speak for them directly. I'm going to let that information come from the school district, and, and St. Charles Parish will share that information as well. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. All. All right, thank y'all. Thank you for coming out. Okay. All right. So uh, we're just going to give you a quick recap of what mm -hmm. we just heard here. We just got a little bit more information about the woman. Now we know that this is a woman that died who was standing outside of her home, but they still, again, don't know exactly all of the circumstances surrounding her death, but reporting uh, that she, that now we do know that this is a woman. And of course, they're withholding the name, of course, depending the notification mm -hmm. of their family. And along with her death, there are also eight people who uh, the sheriff says reported to the hospital who right. have believed non-threatening injuries. So they're expected to be okay. Um, of course, no names being released there either, or exactly how they were injured. We also found out that there are 15 to 20 families in St. Charles mm -hmm. Parish who are in need after this tornado, and almost 500 people without power between um, between the two communities that sustain right. the most damage. So they're encouraging everyone to go to the shelter if you don't have power. Mm -hmm. We know that, as he just mentioned, a lot of people that are out there are still we're trying to repair after Hurricane Ida. A lot of people are still dealing with that damage. And so if you have that, if you need any shelter, you know that you won't have the power back on. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that they're working. Cleco just sending uh, information out to people who are still working to restore power in certain areas. So I'm sure that Entergy will be on it as well. Uh, you can always go to the shelter. We have all that 
that information on our website, www.ltv.com. Yeah, and the sheriff did add that if you do have to leave, don't be worried about your property. They're going to light it up and right. they're going to be patrolling tonight. All right, so of course we're going to check back in with Lily a little bit later to figure out exactly uh, the extent of the damage there. We heard uh, the sheriff mention a house or maybe a mobile home or something was thrown away to a thrown uh, across the street to another yeah, yard. Yeah, two lots, he said. Yeah, that, so. that's, that's a powerful, powerful storm there. Of course. Now another tornado will cause some damage on the west bank of Jefferson Parish. Yeah, Alyssa Curtis was under the West Bank Expressway when the twister hit. She joins us live now with more. Alyssa, what are you seeing where you are? Good evening. We're here just off of the West Bank Expressway off of Avenue C and that tornado that I saw moved so quickly. Residents are saying the same thing. It tore through this building here. Take a look at this. This is a a business that they tell me has been here for decades. It, the tornado completely ripped off the side of the building. The windows and the doors are shattered. Look at all this debris here. They have been working to kind of clean this up. Some of the water pipes too were hit. They just turned those off. So not only did they get rainwater into the building, but they also got that pipe water that it took a little bit to turn on. They're working now again to get um, all this debris cleared. Um, but look at this building completely completely destroyed and behind this building through the neighborhood. It's a very, very similar story. Residents here on this block are working to get some tree debris. Um, there's downed power lines. Again, please do not go by the power lines. Please be careful. But look at this. These poles, some of them are split in half. Power lines down, just debris everywhere. There are emergency vehicles through this area. There were some just speeding through right after the tornado hit. But they are. there are some just sat and patrolling this area right now, making sure people are safe. Um, a lot of residents in this area. Um, trying to get out and safely pick up some of that debris. I'm going to have of the tornado that we saw. So me and my photographer, we are under the West Bank Expressway getting video of just the rain, you know, working to get um, our video put together for these shows. When I looked up and that tornado passed not too far from where we were, um, it was honestly pretty scary. It moved so quickly. Um, so please, please, please be careful. As I was speaking to residents, they told me that it moved so quickly. They looked up and within seconds it was gone and their neighborhood was destroyed. Again, we're in Marrero. Off between Avenue B and C off of the West Bank Expressway. Look here now. I'm going to see if we can pull back our live picture up now. Look at this neighborhood right here. These stop signs down, power lines just out and down, poles completely split. Um, people were just outside right after it hit um, saying, you know, it's going to take a while to fix this back up. They don't know how they're going to do this. Um, they tried to block off the street um, from the rest of the neighborhood because of the power lines down. Um, to make sure everyone is okay. Um, but this is what we're seeing right here in Marrero. We're hearing of more damage uh, just up the street at a Winn Dixie. Um, this is, you know, the picture here um, in a lot of the houses in the neighborhoods in Marrero. So please, please, please be safe. Do not go by the power lines. There's a lot of damage, a lot of water on the streets. You want to be as safe as possible. Um, and again, if there are any more storms by where you are, please get inside, seek shelter because what I saw was happened in seconds. Um, you do not want to be by that. So please, please, please be safe. Reporting live, Alyssa Curtis, Eyewitness News. Alyssa, while we have you, it is unbelievable to see. Sharice and I were just talking about right. all those power lines right. just down right on those homes, and it is so dark where you are as well. Can you just tell us, I guess you've, you've talked to some neighbors there, but what are, what are they feeling? Have you seen people walking around or people mostly in their homes? What do you see? We did see some people walking around trying to pick up um, more so like the tree branches and some of um, the smaller debris. There are some furniture that people had outside, um, but people are trying to pick up more so, you know, the wood planks, the trees, um, but we do not want you to go down by those power lines. They're down. A lot of these poles are split. Um, and again, like you guys said, it is so dark out here at this point. Um, it doesn't look like there's much power out here, um, so it can be extremely dangerous if you're going outside at this time um, because of of all those power lines so you do not want to go by those um, a lot of residents here now at least in the residential area um, are starting to kind of retreat back into their houses and closer to their porches um, so yeah please do not go out here um, by these power lines all right be careful it is dark out there you be careful as well Alyssa thank you so much for that update and 
That's just incredible. You can mm -hmm. see the power line just laying right there on the house just to give you an idea of how dangerous it can be, especially in the dark. So my suggestion to you, please do not go out and start to mess with debris right now. I know that mm -hmm. it, it seems like you want to, but it's just too dark in that area. Light. Just wait, just wait for first responders to go out and survey the area first. Mm -hmm. Well, two people died in the tornado outbreak last night when a twister hit in Caddo Parish. The tornado touched down in Keithville, that's near Shreveport. It ripped apart a house where a woman and her son were seeking shelter from the storm. Officials found the boy's body last night and found his mother a block away this morning. Um, it's really a sad, sad situation. And it's, 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 it's most, one of the most unusual things I've ever seen. Uh, how far, about a half a mile uh, from, from the actual site of where the home used to be. And uh, the few houses that are in there, uh, totally destroyed, uh, gone. The tornado damaged several other structures in the area. That's what we hate to hear. Look, as we mentioned, uh, several parts of St. Charles Parish got hit pretty hard. Yeah, Whitney Miller was in Monson, talked to neighbors who suffered damage there. Yeah, we're still in months. We came down River Road just a little bit and we are here on Etienne Street. I want to show you these trees that have been knocked down by that powerful storm here. Uh, even so much the power lines, you can see there are down wires. In fact, Entergy is looking to get some of these fixed right now. But I met a woman, her name is Mary Kinney. She lives she lives right here in this home. She was in her trailer because that home was being fixed since Ida. She was in this trailer, heard the storm, went outside, saw the tornado coming, and then ran into her home, got into a bathtub and hid with one of her loved ones. And the storm took her new, brand new roof off of her home, but she is okay. I want you to just take a listen to what she told us just a few minutes after being out of her home. We were sitting in the house and I was cell trailer. phones in the trailer and our cell phones went off. And I said, Devon, we got to get out of here. There's a tornado. And he said, the signs didn't go off. I said, I don't care. There's a tornado. We got to go. And we ran out the trailer and we could see it coming across the levee. As soon as we got in the house, we got in the, in the bathroom, in the tub, and our ears started popping and everything was gone and everything was falling on us. We just held on to each other and prayed. Just, we just prayed. Yeah, listening to her just describe what she heard and saw, I mean, it was uh, very harrowing to hear. She was very scared, uh, nervous. She said she texted her son right before uh, this tornado hit, saying she was about to get hit by a tornado. She said that she was thankfully able to talk to her son right afterwards and let her know that she is okay, but obviously upset that her home has been damaged and now there's more work to be done here in months uh, for this whole community uh, to get back together after Ida and now this. Reporting in months, Whitney Miller, Eyewitness News. Oh, that that is absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah, it, um, yeah this and, is gonna be a long road for a lot of people. And really scary, just mm -hmm. a really scary situation for so many people, but I'm just thankful that they made it out safely and everything will be repaired and they'll be able to build back uh, even more just as long as you have your life long yeah. as you have your life all right we want to go to mike mcdaniel uh he's been uh, driving around for us uh, checking out some damage that's happening on the north shore uh mike fill me in where are you right now and what do you see Hey there, ladies. Well, right now we are in Covington and there were areas of concern all over the North Shore today, but thankfully nothing really ever developed into anything too severe that caused damage. So a big sigh of relief for folks up here on the North Shore. We started our day over in Tangibahoa Parish where we spoke to the parish president who told us when storm systems like this move in, it's really concerning because you never know when and where those tornadoes may touch down. There was some indication of one touching down in northern St. Tammany Parish near Folsom. We, know, we went up that way to check things out, but according to the parish president, Mike Cooper, there are no reports of any damage or anything that would confirm that in that area. There were lots of dark clouds today, a lot of heavy rain here on the North Shore, but those pockets of severe weather moved out pretty quickly and then were replaced by others. Areas of the North Shore are still dealing with some lingering rain tonight. Tangipahoa Parish President Robbie Miller says, while there's no reported major damage on the ground in his parish, because of all the rain associated with this system, there could be some lingering concerns.
Well, here in St. Tammany Parish, uh, President Mike Cooper says that the parish is fortunate. He says the high wind gusts may have actually caused some damage to some homes over in the uh, the Slidell area. Right now, we are still we're it's very windy out here right now. We're still dealing with a little bit of rain out there, and if you look closely into the night sky, you can see some of those dark clouds still starting to roll through. But considering everything that's happened down on the South Shore and in the river parishes, folks here on the North Shore will settle with this anytime. Live in Covington, Mike McDaniel, Eyewitness News. Mike, thank you so much. Well, you can help us track the impact of today's severe weather by sharing photos and videos with us, and you can send them straight from your phone. Just text them to us, 504-529-4444. Make sure it's safe whenever you send us these pictures and videos. Be sure to include some information on where you took them, and we could use them on air and uh, online. All right, another tragic story they were covering this evening. The Mississippi Gulf Coast community is in mourning. Tonight, two Bay St. Louis police officers were shot and killed answering a call at a Highway 90 motel. Paul Murphy has that story. There's a growing roadside memorial in front of Bay St. Louis City Hall for the two fallen officers. While the shooting is under investigation, we do know the officers were just doing their job, responding to a call not far from here. A long procession of police from across the Mississippi Gulf Coast escorted the body of Sergeant Stephen Robin from the Hancock County Medical Examiner's Office to the Edmund Fahey Funeral Home in Bay St. Louis. Robin, along with fellow Bay St. Louis police officer Brandon Estorf, were killed in the line of duty at a Motel 6 on Highway 90. Their deaths come as a shocking blow to a saddened community. We just really don't know what to make of it. Actually, I've just been in shock all morning. According to the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, the officers came across a woman at the hotel around 430. For some unknown reason, she allegedly shot and killed both officers before killing herself. This former first responder says his heart goes out to the fallen officers and their families. When you see something like this, yeah, it, get, it gets to everybody in your community and it's being so close to Christmas. Flags are now flying at half staff across Bay St. Louis in honor of Sergeant Robin and Officer Estorp. Throughout the day, mourners have been coming up to Bay St. Louis City Hall to pay their respects and leave flowers next to a flag draped police car. We're all just in shock and want to send our condolences. Jeff Easton put up a flag in his front yard. Sergeant Robin's body passed right in front of his house. You respond to a call to assist the public and you ended up paying the ultimate price. It's real sad. Local first responders saluted Sergeant Robin as his body arrived at the funeral home. Some prayed, others cried and embraced in a shared moment of grief. It's a very small department, uh, tight-knit community, always looking out for the brothers and uh, sisters in red and blue. 43-year-old Amy Brogdon Anderson was identified by the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation as the woman who fired the shots before dying of a gunshot wound to the chest. Investigators say she was with a minor child at the time of the shooting. In Bay St. Louis, Paul Murphy, Eyewitness News.